Hello again, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West, Texas. And you can see the Eco Ranch back in the background. But what is this? Where are we? Well, the title says Hunting Firewood in the Badlands. Well, this is the Badlands that happens to, con bleh, happens to comprise most of our property. The Badlands are actually an arroyo. The arroyo is really about five feet deep and the water runs through it when it rains, you know, sometimes a little, sometimes a lot. Um, but it's non-usable property. And this is the majority of our property, or these badlands here. Not a whole lot uh, that can be done with it. Behind you, I own several acres that uh, really is just flat and um, adobe-ish and not much you can do with it. The only real usable property is what the um, is what the Eco Ranch itself is built on, which is about seven acres up there. Hey, it's 63 years of age. Seven acres is more than we need. But anyway, we're down here today because and this is in my hand for a reason. I'll tell you in a minute. But we're down here today because we need firewood. This is the first first video of 2016 January cold it has been cold here for two weeks this is the first day we're going to have Sun all day for two weeks it's been horribly horribly cloudy so I thought I'd run out and get some firewood we were getting a little bit low now I'm getting firewood down here because for years Debbie's told me oh there's lots of firewood down in the Arroyo well Debbie's a girl and whenever I send her out to get firewood she comes back with all these little sticks like this now She'll fill the truck up with them, but they're all little sticks. So whenever she's told me, oh, there's lots of firewood down in the Arroyo, I say, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And I'm driving all over getting firewood, uh, burning old construction debris, and we haven't bought firewood in five years here. But I went walking down here a couple months ago and noticed that there is firewood down here. In fact, this entire Arroyo, the Badlands, used to be a mesquite forest so I have got stumps and stumps and stumps of some of the hardest most beautiful mesquite down here probably enough to hold us for the rest of this year next year and maybe even into 2017 so we're gonna harvest some of that today I've got this with me because in the arroyo there's all sorts of little uh, well what could be dens for fox skunk coyote whatever they're all long gone by the time I even uh, get down here, but just in case, I have the 20 gauge. Anyway, let's get a little bit of firewood and uh, just give you an idea what it's like to well, get firewood. Well, guys, most here. of the mesquite we have is in um, kind of sort of looks like this. It's in it's 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 been dead for quite a while. It may have been dead for two or three hundred years. I don't know because uh, this arroyo is quite old, but. Um, Anyway, this is what most of it's like. Now, mesquite can put down roots sometimes up to 20 feet deep. I, these don't need roots to go down 20 feet because it periodically gets water every time it rains. But these are dead. These are not alive uh, and just dormant. They're dead and been dead, like I say, maybe for 200 years. But you have to get them out. And that stuff will burn real quickly. If it breaks off that easily in my hand, it'll burn quite easily. But anything like this, I just cut off the small pieces, keep that knuckle, and that knuckle um, is great to burn. But that's pretty much the way most of the firewood comes up, and I walk it over to the truck. Same thing over here. But there are times where you need the tools. So I've got the sledgehammer, the axe, and the shovel. The sledgehammer is always the easy way. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have to dig them out, but they're worth it. If I dig them out, they're going to be a lot bigger than that one. But we've got, we've got a way that these grow. And we're going to move to another one, and I'm going to show you, because it's really kind of cool. And, and you know, if, you're, if you've not been in the desert or spent a lot of time in the desert, you'll find this fairly easy. Now, this right here is the way the majority of the firewood in the Arroyo is. It... Uh, Obviously, you can tell this at one time the ground level had been way up there and the water, you know, eroded it away, much like the Grand Canyon, only on a much smaller scale. So it erodes away, and with this is a very good thing, too, if you don't understand much about erosion. This is why you want things in the soil, holding the soil together, because it actually 
this this tree actually held this this um, I don't know what we call this this mound anyway from from eroding away. Uh, take away the tree, this will erode away in time. Now it won't erode away while I'm alive, but it will erode away. It's a lot of like what happened in the Lus Plateau in China. They took away all the uh, all the things holding the roots down. The soil blew away, and now they're rebuilding it. But sometimes this will break right off. Sometimes I've got to dig it out and get all the way down there, and then I've got to hack through the roots. So let's give it a shot. I'll edit this so it doesn't take forever, but you kind of watch and see what I have to do just to get firewood. Oh, this is easy. Well, that was easy. Now, before somebody puts a comment in that says, yeah, but wood like that's going to burn right up right away. Yeah, a lot of this smaller stuff on the ends here uh, will burn right up. But generally with this uh, mesquite, when it, as it burns down, it burns into a coal. And it actually, it actually sits there like, like charcoal in your, in your grill. And those coals will burn for sometimes eight or nine hours. Uh, and, and keep you plenty warm so that even though it looks like it broke right up and was super dry That will heat our house right there Well for at least through the night So let's get some this more. stuff gets underground and you've got the best wood underground This may have been up here for a couple hundred years drying out It's going to burn a little quick then turn to coal But this stuff that I just dug out and uncovered this uh, the root and and the root that's going over here that's mesquite wood. That's that really good hard mesquite wood that you buy in the stores. Uh, and that's going to burn a long time really, really hot. And it only takes a little bit in my fireplace. So this was well worth the 15 minutes it took to dig out. And I'm just going to work it. And I don't know standing here whether I'm going to be able to edit this or speed it up to two or three times so you can see... So you don't have to watch the five minutes or so it's going to take to dig this out. So I'm just going to shut up and keep working on this thing and see what I got. There. About 20 minutes worth of work for a day's worth of firewood or a night's worth of firewood. Hey, it's not as easy as in the piney woods or in the forests of Michigan. But it's what I have to work with here, and I'm grateful for it. And even though I'm out of breath and it looks like hard work, it's keeping me young and alive and in shape to enjoy these years. So, ah, I'm happy. Thank you, Mr. Rooster. Well, of course, collecting the firewood's only half the battle, or in my case, a third of the battle. I gotta get it over here. I've got to cut it to fit the fireplace, which the fireplace is 18 inches maximum. Uh, so I got to cut it to fit the, um, the the wood stove, rather, and uh, then I've got to stack it. So thought I'd show you how I cut it and show you the stack, uh, just you know, just so you get an idea of how somebody else does it. Everybody, most people know how to cut and stack firewood, but I just thought it might be interesting. So let me show you my pile where this is all going to go. I'll show you the pile now, and I'll show you the pile after we're finished cutting it. I've got to do something about all those roosters. Anyway, this is where we stack the firewood. Uh, take note of... Thank you, guys. Take note of where the plug is, because that, uh, that'll give you an idea when I stack this wood up. Well, honestly, nobody should have to be told about um, safety glasses, uh, but uh, particularly when you're, in my case, almost 80 miles one way to the nearest hospital, you know, you try to keep safety glasses on, so put on my safety glasses and let's cut some, some mesquite wood.
about one blade a year on this saw and um, when I have to when I've got the big pieces and I use the uh, saws all that blade lasts a good long time but we just figure one thirty dollar blade a year to cut firewood with and this is a firewood blade so let's cut the rest of it up um, maybe I'll be able to put this in fast motion so you can see maybe not but I'm gonna leave the, fa the camera run oh and for those that are saying why don't you just break it I want the length, I want as much firewood as I can in that fireplace, so if I cut it, I'm not having splintery edges, or I'm not pulverizing it. Well, so there it is, all cut up. That's all the firewood we did today. It took me about three and a half hours. If you make $20 an hour, that's about 70 bucks worth of time invested in this. That'll be about 10 days worth of firewood for Debbie and I because our stove's very efficient. It's a uh, made in Vermont wood uh, soapstone catalytic stove. It takes the outside air for combustion. Hello Cascade. It takes the outside air for combustion so that uh, all the heat it creates stays inside the building. So this will work for about 10 days. 70 bucks at 20 bucks an hour. If you make 10 bucks an hour it's about 40 bucks, I guess, isn't it? Or 35. Anyway, uh, it's a beautiful day out, so let's go end the uh, let's go end this video with Cascade out of my face, back out in the Arroyo. Oh, Cash. Yeah. And I guess that gives you an idea what I have to go through for firewood here. Like I said, if the if the if the world comes to an end, Debbie and I will walk out here every day and collect firewood. Walk it the quarter mile to the house. So for now. From out here in the bad lands of the Eco Ranch, it's Robert Earl wishing you all a happy new year and a happy 2016. We'll see you later from out in far west Texas. Right, Cascade? What do you say, huh? Come here. Let's dance for everybody before we go off. Come on. Do, 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 do,